Hello, people. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? This uh, trailer is based on the story that is the antithesis of Jabby, the tamed dog. <laughs> <laughs> I got a funny feeling. Wild Dog Trailer. Uh, Akineni Nagarjuna is the first name that we see here. That is the star. And it also stars Dia Mirza Sayami Kher Ali Reza Mayank Parak and Prakash. It's written and directed by Ash uh, Ahishor Solomon. So, okay, very good. All right, so if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, hit the all notifications, and then you'll be happy, guaranteed. Otherwise, you don't get your money back. You don't get your money back. There's nothing. Here yeah, we go. Sorry. That's an A. Oh, is cool? that, that place is cool. <gasps> well, you can't show that. Media and patient Gandhi. Sorry, case me. And I can't watch it, Tama. And I. the best we have. That's who the best you have is. Okay. Arajesh Kun, sir. Huh? Arajesh Kun, sir. Why? Did he have a bomb on him? No, he just doesn't. Also known as. He's an executor. Wild dog. Me department ki media ki wild dog ayo mucho. Na kado. Hey. Now the question is, who is he? Pakistan Raji College in the Riyaz Bhai Chisadu. Hi, Indra. Pokhade Abba Kutera. Ikkadwadi Peru Dr. Yusuf, a religious preacher. Ippud ISA protection owner. Nadu Varka Valadam, Ante Izi Kadu. Wow. I'm not okay with that. What's she wearing? Wow, that is uh, okay. not uh, holding back at all. Nope, uh, nope, wow, Jesus. It started off with a bang as well. I mean, like literally and figuratively, but like I was about to make a joke about the little chai place being popping, you know, cause it was just full of people. I was like, oh yeah, look at that, like super popular. It's, it's, it's popping off. And then literally boom, I was like, oh no, I can't even make that joke now. Cause that's really sad. And it's based on that is, a, that is a Tulko Carney. I thought that was a Tulko Carney. Yeah. So here's the thing. There are two opinions that Jebby has. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Me. Opinion one. Jebby. So our opinion one is, this is pretty cool. It's this visceral feeling that, you, you know, when you're, you know, living in a, a country that has been hit with terrorism and whatnot, mm -hmm. and it's like, you want something where you can vicariously respond through. And so you get this action story of these guys who are kicking ass and taking names and just like, they are bending the law because they're like, these guys don't even deserve jail. Take them out. That yeah. sort of attitude, right? I totally get that feeling. Admittedly, I sort of got a little bit of that when I was watching um, American Sniper. And I'm not Republican, I'm not right-leaning. I enjoyed that movie, you know, as, uh, as an American. I was like, all right, cool, you know. Uh, but the other part of me goes, so you're taking real world stuff and you're turning it into pop cinema and you're turning it into like action cinema. This isn't a drama, this is an action film. You have something like, uh, Talvar, and then you have this. You have something like um, Ugly, right? That's mm -hmm. like that's like hard drama. Yeah. Versus, um, well, anything with Rajni Kanth or something. I don't know. Like, you know, it, you have these guys who are flying through the airs and, and, and catch, flying through the airs, <laughs> all two of them. Okay, flying through the air and catching a gun and shooting yeah. and stuff. Like, that's not military tactic strategy. You know, that's not like, 
That's just cool. That's just cool. That's not tactical training. That's just cool. That's just for cinema. It's over the top and uh, uh, enhanced, elevated. What do you want to? What do you want to call it? Uh, not surreal. Larger but, uh, than larger life. Larger than life. Uh, all those things. You get what I'm saying, right? Um, let me go get my dictionary for more synonyms. So all I'm I trying to say you is a thesaurus. Uh, thesaurus. That's right. <laughs> Here you go. Jabby Kuwait, English speaker. Okay, yeah, all I'm trying to say is that it's a little bit weird as an American, having grown up with American sensibilities and American cinema, where you're conditioned and taught, like, okay, if you're gonna do something about real world events, like, try to imagine them making a film like this about September 11th, which American Sniper kind of was. There, there was, in defense of like this. There was one scene where there was like rock music and like, let's go get those guys. There was one scene like that, but most of the film was like drama, heavy, intense, emotional, PTSD. You know, it's dealing with that kind of stuff. And anytime there's action, it's done in such a way that feels like it could actually happen. Right. 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 And so I was just thinking about like at the very end of the movie, he takes out a guy from like a mile away, but that, that supposedly did happen with Chris Kyle. I don't know if that's true or not. My point is, there's a lot of lavish stuff going on in this movie, and it's like, I, I, I get both sides at the same time. There's one side of me that goes, wow, that's pretty awesome. Ah. You're vicariously living through these characters or taking out the bad guys that have been imparting just frustration and anger and sadness on your country. There's the other side of me that goes, well, that's not how it would go down though. Well, also the, the other side of me goes, oh, that's kind of a problem though. I mean, and that's the whole point. That's why he's he's the wild dog, right? Is because you can't control him. And, and that's a problem because you can't just have a guy working for law enforcement or whatever government agency he's working for, just going out and literally just taking out all the bad guys. Cause sometimes you can't and you shouldn't do that. You need to bring them in for questioning or like, you can cause more problems by killing other people's people. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, in this case, he's going after terrorists. What was the name of the film with uh, John Abraham? He helps India build its first nuclear missile. It was with something I with a P. Forgot I forgot the name. Yeah, I forgot I the name. I watching it's, that film. Something with a P. And in that film, there are uh, fight scenes, and at the very end, there's like this bullet time shot. And it gets a little bit, you know, larger than life, mm -hmm. you know? And that's based on a true story. And on the other side, you have something like um, Family Man, which is not necessarily based on a true story, but it's very, I just burped. It's very real in the way that it conducts itself. Yeah. It's like real drama. Again, that's the kind of thing I'm trying to lay out here is you have stuff where it feels like, uh, what's the, the action series with Jay Devkin and- um, Singham. It's like bordering on that in right. terms of just like, it's over the topness, right? And so that's why you're mixing these two tones. Like you start off with these people getting killed in a terrorist attack. Yeah. Like that hits you a certain kind of way and it's heavy. It's awful. It's it's really awful and I'm not prepared for something to follow that's like people jumping through the, through the air like hot fuzz and catching guns and firing, you know? I'm not, yeah. I'm not ready for that because of my American conditioning with cinema. And so I'm just admitting that I have a limitation here in how I'm able to enjoy this. Like now when I go into the cinema, or whatever, watch this. I'm more prepared for that. I'm more prepared for, it's taking real world events, but it's creating this, uh, you know, larger than life action film out of it. Well, yeah, because they're focusing on a guy who's basically a superhero at yes. this point. You know, he's like a, a real life superhero. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's the expectation. And if you can go in there with that kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna have fun with this, then, it's fine. I, I guess like you, I was just a little bit thrown off by the bombings in the beginning and yeah. then like, oh my gosh, now it's this like larger than life action film, which generally I enjoy, yeah. so. I also don't get sold on gore. And so when you have cut after cut after cut of like just a montage of people dying, I'm not sold on that. Like I'm more sold on story and beautiful cinema than I am on a montage of death. You know well, yeah, because like, that, that's what makes me feel like this character, the way he's being portrayed, I guess he's kind of an anti-hero. Like he's he's kind of problematic because he goes around executing people. I, My initial feeling is it's kind of hard to get on board with a guy who literally just shoots everyone in the head. So I need to know why. Well, but they showed him with his family. Yeah, the, so. the, the whole thing is that it's making him cool for what he's doing and that's hard. Like for me personally, if you want to talk about real world stuff, I don't believe in executing the enemy, assuming like you got attacked, right? I, I wasn't happy when Osama bin Laden got killed. I wanted him to be brought to justice. I wanted him to rot in a jail. I didn't want him to just get killed because it gets off too easy that way. He doesn't have to deal with suffering for what he did. Right. He's taken out and therefore it's like, it's over. A long time ago when T Timothy McVeigh did the, the bombing, Oklahoma bombing, he was in jail for six years and then he was like, you know what, just 
execute me. Just, I'll, I'll take the chair or the gas or whatever it is. And they let him. I'm like, why, why does he get to say so in this? Why doesn't he just rot in prison for the rest of his life? I think that's what it should happen. 300 years so he can't even get, get parole, so he can't get out ever. He just rots in prison for all the death that he basically did. All the terrorism, the domestic terrorism that he did. That's messed up. Like, why should he be allowed to just take himself out? So when he's just executing these people, I have mixed feelings about it because I'm like, yeah, on the if he's just defending himself in order to get to the main villain, yeah. fine. Knowing that more than likely he's just gonna take everybody out without question, that's less interesting to me because I want the people who caused harm to innocent lives to suffer. Or at least to maybe see a sort of uh, internal conflict with him. He just seems to be a guy who's very cut and dry. He's just like, this is what I do. I don't listen to authority. I see a bad guy and I shoot him and I kill him. And so it's like, okay, so where, where are we going with well, this? Well, yeah, that's the kind of, I mean, I'm not, uh, the thing about it is I, I can enjoy a John Woo movie, right? That's a, there's a lot of death and destruction in there. There's a lot of killing. We're coming from two different angles here. Like in the confines of a trailer, when that's all you're showing me, I'm less interested. I'm more interested like in the uh, dramatic thing to, to hook into. Like you gotta start me there. And it, it kind of did that with- Like an emotional hook? Yeah, it kind of did that showing you the terrorist attack at the beginning. Yeah. But like, again, that sets up a different tone. You're not setting up the tone for Hot Fuzz. You're setting up the tone for like something just darker. That being said, a lot of people enjoyed the- Yeah, they enjoyed the heck out of this yeah, trailer. Yeah, exactly. So, so what do we know? Yeah. I mean, it might, it might be a super fun movie. I mean, I think it could well be just for the cool action and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, you guys, uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to your thoughts. Hopefully you are cool with our honesty. Otherwise, uh, this is gonna be fun. I'm Jabby Kuei, this is- Achara Kirk. Peace out.